Ah, the good old U.S. Navy LM frequency meter. This is not one of them. This is actually the predecessor. It's an LJ. Specifically, I think it's an LJ1. Unfortunately, the tags are missing, except for the mount, and I'll show you that. The actual tags are missing off the side. You can see the holes where the tag was, and there's a little bit of tag there. Hopefully, someday I'll be able to replicate that. But yeah, LJ. This is a little frequency meter. These were used generally for setting up the, uh, the transmitters and such like that on aircraft. These were built for aircraft. The, uh, the ships had a much, much larger frequency meter called LD uh, in the 30s. And one of these days I'll make videos of my LDs. I have several of those. Uh, this was the aircraft version made by GE. I think 34, 35 maybe. Like I said, I, the tags are missing, so it's a little hard to see. Okay, take a look. Typical navy black box. And uh, RF output. RF input. Way to turn your crystal on and off. High band and low band. Kind of a weird switch. It's a little jammed, so I have to work on that. Turn your filament on and off. And uh, of course some audio outputs. Then there's this weird thing. It's actually a switch. This actually holds crystals. And there's that little window there. Unfortunately, I think there's only one crystal in here. And we'll get around to it eventually. You can see little tags, number six LF, number seven HF. Oh, there's a crystal. Number eight HF, and it looks like 1050 KC. Very early crystal, we'll get inside and show you that. Here we have our crank knob. It's a little, it's a little bit weird. You have uh, this is the actual crank. It's a little stiff, and the corrector. This actually moves. So, say you're beating this against one of the crystals, and you need to be against 30, and the the crank says here. Well, we correct it by just moving this over. 30. Maybe not as, as nice and elegant or simple as the LM, but this is the way GE did things. Got a little tuning chart. Let's open this up. Got some thumb screws. Oh, yeah, and then there's this thing. I don't know what this is for. I don't have a manual. I should say that right off the bat. I don't have a manual. I don't know what this is for. It's got some holes here. It's meant to swivel. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> if anyone knows what this thing is for, please let me know. Anyway, let's take a look inside. Rutherford is helping again. Pardon me while I move things around. Here we go. Very nice construction. Very 1930s. I don't know what the tubes are. Looks like four tubes. I'm assuming these are probably maybe, well, I don't know, crystal oven maybe? It's got a connection. Uh, maybe transformers. You can see we have the standard Navy aircraft power plug there. Six pin or five pin with the index if you really think about it. The capacitor is all boxed up and sealed up. Got some nice shielded uh, cabling there or wiring. Very nice, very nice. Take a look at the bottom. And here we see this massive thing. This is the wheel that holds the crystals. And you can see the crystals fit in there. And the one crystal is, you can kind of barely see it, it's still towards the front. Maybe I can scooch it over here. There we go. I'm not terribly familiar with that crystal uh, style. I have seen it. Uh, they're not too common. 
uh, CG40001B. So early, early Navy number. Typical bathtub caps. So yeah, I don't know what the tubes are. I'm assuming this pretty much works the same way as an LM. Uh, yeah, I don't have a manual. If any of you guys have a manual or any information, I just have little tiny little tidbits of information on the LJ, uh, LJ series. Apparently there was an LJ and an LJ1. Uh, I'd certainly like to hear from you, especially if you've got a real manual. I would like to get this thing up and running, plug in some, some good tubes in there, some nice 30s Navy tubes, see how well this thing works. I'm assuming the power, being that's the standard power uh, power connector, probably works like an LM. You could probably even use an LM power supply. Just for fun, put this down. Excuse me. Here is the tag that I do have for the mount. And yeah, I got the mount. So you can see LJ1. Sorry about the, the crud there. Should I come off? Yeah, I have to clean it up. 12634, Bureau of Engineering. So I assume the other tags looked like that. Kind of the silvery or probably nickel. Nickel-plated uh, brass, I'm assuming. But pretty standard shock mount there. Oh, and I guess I should mention that it does have these studs on top. I'm going to assume that is for the calibration book. Because, well, frequency meters like this need a, need a calibration book. Uh, so, if, I, if anyone has a, even a picture that I could maybe cobble something up that looks right, I'm kind of assuming it's probably clipped in here, probably an aluminum box. Maybe, maybe it opens up. Maybe that's where the catch was. I don't know. Um, and uh, yeah, I, perhaps I don't, you know, I don't know if, if one of those will have a show, show up. I have no idea how many of these things were made. Let's bring the main unit back up here because that's that's way more interesting than a, than an empty black box. Uh, it would be nice to yeah, perhaps make a copy of the calibration book. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, about actually calibrating it, filling in all those numbers. Because, yes, remember that the calibration books on these things, um, they're all unique. You have to match serial numbers up. And uh, if you see an LM or an LJ that does not have the original calibration book, and you have to look at the serial numbers, make sure the serial numbers match, make sure the model numbers match, make sure everything matches. If it doesn't have that book... Well, it's a neat little oscillator, but, you know, it's, it's not going to be terribly accurate. Now, an LM, I think with an LM you could get about, on a good day, about five digits of accuracy when uh, dialing up a frequency. I don't know how good this was. I'm assuming it was a little worse, you know, because, hey, if it was better, they would have just kept using this. Um, you know, eh, this was probably a slightly more expensive design than the LM. Uh, the LM, of course, was far more compact. Um, it had a lot more parts. It seems like it's bigger. It has, I want to say, kind of weirdly, more parts, but a simpler design. Because the LM really was fantastic job of cramming everything into that little cube. So there are all sorts of weird little gussets and bits and brackets. And probably took forever to build the darn things at the factory. This is a little more straightforward, isn't it? Um, so yeah, uh, calibration, uh, need the book or a copy of the book or a picture of the book or rumors of a book existing, <laughs> anything. I will take anything because, well, I do not have a manual for this. And yeah, that's one of the reasons for me making these videos. One, to show off this, this weird stuff. You know, occasionally I'd, I'd bring them to the military shows so yeah, people look at them. But, you know, YouTube is just a, a, a better way, probably, to, to get these things out to the masses. Because, yeah, this thing, okay, I bought this on eBay mm, five or six years ago, maybe. I think a lot of people didn't know what it was, so I think I got it 
fairly cheap. Um, but, uh, you know, hey, yeah, I could, I could put it on my shelf. In fact, it's been sitting on my shelf at my old house for about five years, and no one saw it. So, yeah, let's bring it out into the air, the open air. And, yeah, it's, it's a nice sunny day here. Look at that. Um, it's a nice day, and i got to make some videos, catch up, because I've been out, out of town and out of service and all, out of commission and out of, out of energy and everything. So, hey, let's bring this LJ out. Maybe it will dig up another one. Maybe it will dig up a manual. Maybe it will dig up just even a picture so I could replicate bits that are, are missing. Maybe it will solve the mystery of whatever the hell this weird thing is. Suggestions are welcome. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, hope you like this video of this weird thing, this LJ1, at least I think it's a one, LJ1 from GE. G E blah, blah. So um yeah, kind of a neat little pre-war frequency meter for aircraft use. Probably not too many were made because, well, let's face it, the air arm of the Navy in the 1930s was just not that big. This was probably for some of the big patrol aircraft, because I can't see this being in a fighter. Uh, but there just weren't that many of them. Okay, so well. Leave a like if you like this. Maybe subscribe. Maybe check out some of the other videos. I have some more of my uh, pre-war military electronics stuff. Um, videos of that. I'm making more and more of them because I'm get, getting them out of storage and show, show and tell and all that kind of stuff. So maybe look at some old videos. Uh, by all means, comment. Um, and hey, if you've got a manual, make sure you leave a nice big comment so I read it. Uh, other than that, I think I'll close this out. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.